The little ball of light seemed almost grateful to us for setting it free. It bathed each of us in warm light, and I felt my blood begin to pump again, and my wounds begin to close. Welcome to Monster of the Week! In this week's episode, we are talking about beings made out of pure energy, appropriately named Energons. They can be found in 3rd edition's Manual of the Planes, however they date all the way back to the original Fiend Folio. Despite the name, they don't actually have anything to do with Transformers, however, I still think they're really cool monsters and worthy of note. So as always, we're going to talk about just what these little guys are, how they handle combat when it comes up, and how you can use them in your game. So, to get started, let's talk about what Energons actually are. They come in two varieties, the Zagya, which are beings of pure positive energy, and the Zagyi, which are beings of pure negative energy. And shocker, they come from the distant planes of positive and negative energy. Who would have thought? They appear as translucent globes, with anywhere from 4 to 12 tentacles trailing from behind them. They don't seem to have much in the way of discernible anatomy, however they do seem to have two glowing dots toward the front of their form that almost suggest eyes. The Energons are incorporeal in nature, meaning that they can pass through substances like walls, doors, pretty much anything solid. This also means in combat they take much less damage from non-magical weapons and attacks. So that's pretty much it for the general information on these guys. Now let's talk about what actually makes them unique. Starting with the Zag Ya, we'll talk about its Energy Lash ability. This ability allows the Zag Ya to lash out with its many tentacles at a single creature. This might come as a shock to many creatures at first, but they'll soon realize that no harm has come to them. In fact, if the creature isn't undead, they'll begin to regain hit points as the pure positive energy begins to flow through them. However, should a Zagya use its positive energy lash on an undead, it will cause the damage as usual. The Zagya can of course choose not to release this positive energy, which ultimately results in it just whacking its target with its tentacles. Another interesting ability is that the Zagya can turn undead within 60 feet of itself just as the cleric can do with his channel divinity feature. This is ultimately sort of a niche ability, but there are those in the world who could find a use for this. More on that in a minute. As you were probably expecting, the Zag Yi has similar powers to the Zag Ya, but they function in completely opposite ways. For starters, its energy lash ability deals negative energy damage, which will harm living creatures. However, it has the same healing effect on undead creatures. You can probably see where this is going. And counter to the Zag Ya, the Zag Yi cannot turn undead, but it can rebuke undead. And one last ability that both creatures actually possess is an energy ray. The Zag Ya fires a ray of positive energy, the Zag Yi fires a ray of negative energy. It does a good amount of damage, or healing, depending on who its target is, and it can fire at targets that are up to 30 feet away, so it's got some good distance. It's for this power alone that these creatures are valued so highly. See, the thing about these guys is that despite how any mortals view the forces of good versus evil, Energons are ultimately unaligned. They are simply two very different forms of energy. However, it's also for this reason that they're treated more as items than creatures. Not much is known about their origin or their purpose, but over the years, powerful necromancers and clerics alike have learned to use their unique abilities for their own gain. A cleric might try to capture or even befriend one of these creatures to assist it with healing at its temple or even fighting back against the undead. Or for that same reason, a necromancer could try to capture a Zeg Yi, Something with the capacity to boost its undead minions is very valuable. Plus, if the Necromancer is actually a Lich, he can then use the Zeg Yi as a source of healing for himself. Both of these scenarios could be really interesting during a boss fight. If a powerful Cleric or Necromancer that the party is fighting has an Energon on its side, it's just going to make the fight that much tougher. However, there is one thing in the book that I think kind of ties all of this encounter together. When an Energon has been captured by whoever's capturing it for their own reasons, and is then freed by, say, the party in this situation, the Energon will actually show gratitude towards the party by either healing them or fighting alongside them against its captor. This could come as a huge boon to the players during a boss fight, because now not only are they taking away some power from their enemy, but they're also gaining assistance to help them take it down. Plus, it usually makes players feel good when they can free an innocent creature that's being used for evil. On the flip side of that though, if the party's the one who's captured an Energon, if it ever gets free or is set free by one of their enemies, they better watch out. One other bit of flavor that I think is really cool from the books is that it mentions these creatures are drawn to places where birth and death are taking place. So, if you have an important birth coming up in your campaign, involving a Zag Ya simply as an observer, 
Could be a really interesting way to make that more mystical and mysterious. Alternatively, if there's a prolific execution coming up in your world, maybe a Zegi is there to check things out. Either way, if used properly, it could make your session just that much more memorable. As I said before, these beings are so alien to the material plane, no one really knows what their origin or purpose is. The neat thing about that is it leaves it up to you as a DM to decide for yourself. Why are they here? Are they on a mission of cosmic importance? Or are they simply observers sent from the distant planes to learn more about us? The book has intentionally left it very open-ended, so whatever you do decide the truth is, it should be easy to fit around whatever you want it to be. One thing that's sure to come up, should the party learn about both kinds of Energon, is how they'll interact with each other. The answer may be a bit surprising. When a Zagyan and a Zagy see each other, they immediately rush together to make contact as quickly as possible. Their energies then rapidly combine and create an explosion that deals force damage to a huge area centered on wherever they connected. Despite being an interesting and possibly lethal thing to witness, the applications for you as a DM are very extensive. If a powerful wizard, say, learns of this, he could then imprison a Zegya and a Zegi and keep them in some sort of chamber that when a command word is issued, it allows them to mix and a huge explosion is created wherever they are. By doing something like that, you've literally just created an energy bomb. Ultimately, it's up to your own creativity to figure out a way to utilize this, but there are some pretty crazy wizards out there and some pretty crazy DMs, so please let me know in the comments, I'd be really interested to see what you come up with. Another worthwhile question regarding that is why? Why do they react this way? Do they want to be destroyed? Or maybe the combination of their energies creates some kind of new life on a different plane. The book really doesn't give us much to go on here, but that's what's so cool about Energons is they're just so weird and it really allows you to just come up with whatever you want. I kind of like the idea of these two creatures coming together to create some form of new life on the astral plane. Maybe that lends to their purpose as well. Perhaps they come to the material plane as a sort of meeting place where a Zeg Yi searches out a Zeg Ya, and when they come together they create this new, better life form on a different plane. I don't know, I just think that would be a really neat idea, but maybe you can come up with something better. But as I said in my last video, I was away this week so I kinda had to push things to get both episodes ready in time for when I left. That said though, I will be back uh, tomorrow as of when this video goes up, so things should be back to normal next week. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.